Hi everyone, I'm Katrina and today I'm going to be presenting about the threat of Alzheimer's disease on an aging population. And I think that this is one of the most important but least glamorous aspects of global health and medicine and it is definitely something that I'm very passionate about. So today I'm going to give a short introduction of myself, a brief background of my topic, a description of the physiology of Alzheimer's disease, um, some insight into current and potential treatments, an overview of the socioeconomic implications of Alzheimer's and a quick summary at the end. So a little bit about me, I'm a rising senior from the UK and I'm hoping to apply for medical school in autumn. I want to practice for the NHS in the NHS. At school, I am head girl and one of the heads of medical society. I also enjoy playing music, dancing and volunteering. I am quite a strong advocate for universal healthcare and I'm definitely in awe of the resilience that NHS workers have shown throughout the pandemic. In May 2020, I involved my school in a letter writing scheme to NHS key workers through a charity called The Crisis Project. So on to the more interesting matter at hand. An aging population presents many new challenges with us having to remodel our global health response to tend to the needs of elderly patients. And COVID-19 has really opened our eyes to their increased vulnerability. Alongside the physical changes that accompany old age, neurological decline can have a striking toll on human identity. Neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's are among the top 10 terminal conditions that cannot be cured or slowed dramatically. The progression of Alzheimer's disease is incredibly slow. It goes through three general stages, making it all the more excruciating for the patient and the family. And eventually patients will die from a secondary infection, which is most commonly pneumonia, because elderly patients with severe Alzheimer's are generally too weak to fight off infections. So what is Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease and neurodegenerative diseases are a group of diseases that results in the progressive degeneration and death of neurons. It afflicts one in nine of Americans aged 65 and older. It is the third most expensive disorder after cancer and coronary heart disease in the US. It is the most common cause of dementia and dementia is a syndrome describing a decline in memory, cognition and behavior. So AD causes 60 to 70% of these cases. And it is also important to note that this is not a normal aging process. So what is the physiology of Alzheimer's disease? There are two pathological hallmarks of the disease and these are the buildup of beta amyloid plaques and of P-tau neurofibrillary tangles. So beta amyloid plaques are protein fragments that are produced by amyloid precursor proteins and this, these disrupt the signaling in between neurons. Um, cell death eventually occurs when these plaques trigger immune responses which end up destroying disabled nerve cells. P-tau neurofibrillary tangles form from chemical changes to the protein tau, which usually performs a very significant role in stabilizing microtubules. But when these chemical changes occur and tangles happen, they end up accumulating inside of the neuron and end up blocking its transport system, which results in cell death. And there are also other factors linked to AD, such as chronic inflammation and vascular problems. So these are the current treatments um, that we have to treat AD. And currently we don't have any treatments that can cure Alzheimer's, but we have two main ones that can manage symptoms and slow disease progression in some patients. So the one that's most commonly used is a group of drugs called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So in Alzheimer's patients, the levels of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, are very low in their brains because of the death of the cells that produce them. And acetylcholine's function is linked to memory, learning, and other cognitive functions. So drugs such as denepazil, rivastigmine, and galantamine, they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. And this means that it prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine in the brain, which means that Alzheimer's patients have more of this neurotransmitter that is linked to memory. Other drugs that can be used are drugs called NMDA antagonists. And this is because Alzheimer's patients produce an excessive amount of a neurotransmitter called glutamate. And so glutamate binds to postsynaptic neurons via NMDA receptors. And when NMDA receptor activity is excessive, this leads to excitotoxicity and cell death. So drugs such as memantine block NMDA receptors when they become overactive. And you can use acetylcholinesterase inhibitors alongside NMDA antagonists, and usually the effect is much more significant when you use them together. So those are the main treatments um, that 
are used exclusively for Alzheimer's, but there are also some treatments that are used in the holistic care of Alzheimer's patients, such as antidepressants, which are used for patients with moderate to severe Alzheimer's, especially those with a lot of emotional distress, cognitive stimulation therapy, which are, is basically involves patients participating in group activities to enhance memory and problem solving skills, cognitive rehabilitation, which involves patients having one to one sessions with professionals such as occupational therapists to reach personal goals and everyday tasks, such as learning how to use a telephone or a computer. And this is amazing because it helps activate parts of the brain that aren't usually activated. Reminiscence and life story work is another final option and reminiscence work involves a patient talking about their past with the aid of props or music and life story work involves using compilations of photos. So these are the current treatments out there. There are many potential treatments that are being tested and which are testament to the evolving nature of medical research. And so ones that are being tested at the moment target beta amyloid plaques, the hyperphosphorylation of tau to form tangles, they reduce inflammation, they track the relationship between vascular health and AD and many more. So that's very exciting. So since this is a global health conference, I thought that I would mention the socioeconomic implications that accompany Alzheimer's. And as I said at the beginning of this presentation, Alzheimer's is the single biggest cause of dementia and dementia has very weighty socioeconomic implications. The total global cost of dementia in 2015 was estimated to be around 818 billion US dollars. It can have a very overwhelming effect on families and carers from a financial perspective and also from an emotional one too. Patients with dementia are also often denied basic autonomy and human rights with the use of physical and chemical restraints in care homes and acute care settings. So these are the problems that I've outlined. Um, so what are we doing to tackle dementia on a global scale? So the WHO has coined dementia a public health priority and they have undergone many measures to sort of tackle dementia on an international scale. So these include a blueprint of action for policymakers as well as for international and domestic partners, the Global Dementia Observatory, which is a surveillance platform for the sharing of knowledge about dementia, research and care services. And something that I think is very exciting is a knowledge and skills training program called iSupport for dementia carers. And this sort of ups the accessibility and person-centered aspect of dementia care. So what does dementia care look like in the UK? So as you may know, healthcare in the UK is very different um, than health from healthcare in the US. It is very centralized and it is publicized and a lot of the services are government funded, so they are free. So a lot of services for dementia patients are free, not just from the NHS, but also social services from the adult social care part of the government. So social services are free and they can encompass meals and wheels, laundry services, washing and dressing. NHS support can encompass GP health, um, hospital treatments, as well as physiotherapy, speech and language therapy, and just general support from the older people's mental health team. And something that's really interesting is a concept called continuing healthcare, which is when a diagnosis of Alzheimer's can be so severe that NHS, the NHS completely covers the cost of care at home, social services, and care at a care home. So in conclusion, AD is a huge problem for our aging population. It is also a very new problem. So there is a lot that we do not know about the disease and how we can adapt it to treating our population. So what we need to do to combat it is to focus on finding treatments to cure or better slow down the disease. And we also need to support elderly patients with social services. So just a few acknowledgements. I wanted to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference at Johns Hopkins University team for this amazing opportunity. And thank you to my family and friends. Here are my references. Thank you for listening.